when you can actually see your profit for the year in, in dollars and cents, you, it, it gets you more in the notion of selling corn, knowing that I can lock in a $50,000 profit or whatever the profit is, you want to lock it in. If I know I can make that much profit in a year, I will be in business next year. Good afternoon, welcome to Grain TV. My name is Cody Bills. Today is June 3rd. It's a Wednesday. We had ethanol numbers out today. We also will talk a little bit about Informa numbers which were released. But before we get into both of those, let's turn over to the Grain Hedge Trading Platform and see where we close off the day. Corn unchanged on the day. Soybeans down five and three quarters and wheat in Chicago down three and a quarter. But it really didn't do justice to the price action. Of course, we did close down on the day, but in the beginning of the day, we opened above that 100-day moving average. Now, we talked about this earlier on in the week, that the 100-day moving average had acted as resistance here two weeks ago, could act as resistance again. Now, we opened above that. We traded higher throughout the day, uh, but by the close, we, we were met with some pretty significant selling pressure, ended up closing down around that 100-day move, 100 moving average again. So it's going to be interesting to see what tomorrow's trade action brings. I know there are some pieces of news out there uh, that could cause some continued movement higher here in wheat particularly you have the dryness in uh, India that's a concern there uh, monsoon delayed about five six days now uh, it, there's there's a it, it's been very very hot there and that's put pressure on the crops so not only do you have the India situation that we're going to want to continue to monitor it may not necessarily be a major uh, event that could rally wheat right now but it's something we want to continue to monitor because uh, especially with India coming out and announcing that they're you know they expect the monsoon 88 percent of what the long-term average is that's something that should be on our radar but we also have the situation over in Ukraine it looks like eastern Ukraine uh, fighting erupting over there again uh, after a, a long period of time when there was a ceasefire here so that is a little bit alarming and that could start to raise some concerns here about wheat now we know that in the past we did have a ukraine situation rallying the wheat market but it wasn't sustainable and so i would sus i would suspect that uh, you know we'll have a situation like that again if we continue to see fighting in Ukraine, this isn't a long-term bullish story, but it, should, it could be something that could trigger more short covering and cause wheat to move higher than you'd necessarily anticipate. So that's something we want to keep on our radar. Keep in mind, U.S. dollar did trade down today in the earlier part of the session. We were trading higher. Uh, that's something, uh, of course, ADP numbers did come out this morning. Uh, they were a little bit better than expected. That lifted the dollar, but that uh, rally was immediately sold into. And what we got was the U.S. dollar trading lower, which should help lift uh, the, the overall commodities, but was unable to really uh, move uh, grains into the positive territory. Informa did come out today. They uh, trimmed their winter wheat forecast to 100 or 1.481 billion bushels. Uh, that is uh, from 1.486. So they did move it a little bit uh, lower. Another thing that's interesting about uh, Informa's numbers is they raised their production forecast out of South America, Brazil. They increased uh, soybean production by 1 million metric tons to 95.5 million metric tons. They increase Argentina corn by 1 million metric tons to 25 million metric tons. And they increase Argentina soybeans 1 million metric tons to 60 million metric tons. So these are more situations of South American production continuing to grow. And this is the kind of forecast that come out. And it seems to be a, a real negative here for corn and soybeans. It's been something that they've been fighting. Uh, really strong growing conditions down in South America. And that puts a lot of pressure on U.S corn and uh, soybeans and wheat. One thing to keep in mind is that ethanol did come out today. We did get a bump in production week over week. We are up 3,000 barrels per day on the week to 972,000 barrels per day. Ethanol stocks, we had stocks, we had a little bit of a drawdown there, down 29,000 barrels to 20.07 million barrels. So when you want to look at what this uh, ethanol production means on a weekly basis, the green lines here 
represent weekly ethanol production. And you'll notice the last three green lines have been exceptionally strong. Uh, we've had exceptionally good uh, ethanol production over the last three weeks, well over 2013 levels, well over the four year moving average. So this is good to see. Uh, right now we're about 4.8% uh, above uh, last year's production levels, USDA is expecting about a 1.3% increased corn used for ethanol. So uh, that is uh, something that we want to continue to pay close attention to. And then, of course, let's talk a little bit about wheat. Uh, you'll notice wheat here, uh, we talked a little bit about it earlier on, traded higher throughout the day. By the end of the day, closed down near that 100-day moving average. You know, it moved right into an area that we consolidated in just two weeks ago. That area uh, is a scarred pricing landscape and it would be difficult to move through it. And, and when you look at this, to me it shows that there is significant resistance. I don't think this necessarily means we cannot get above uh, this price level, above this uh, you know, 512, 520 uh, area, but I do think that this is an area uh, that, that we're gonna have to work through if we're gonna get above. I think it's not necessarily gonna be slicing uh, right through it to get higher. I think there are some pieces of news out there that could cause some continued short covering, but in general, today's price action continues to show that the downtrend is intact. We have not broken that downtrend. We have not yet closed above the 100-day moving average. Both of those signal to me uh, that you want to be cautious here. You don't necessarily want to be getting long right now, uh, but it might be uh, prudent to just uh, see what price action does here. It may be choppy uh, right around this 100-day moving average uh, before we either move higher or lower. And I know that's a little bit vague, uh, but right now you can see uh, it's, it's very difficult uh, to predict uh, price action for wheat. We'll just look at the last uh, really three, four months. You know, we've been trading in this range, chopping up and down. And so I think in order to get out of that range, it's going to take a significant news event that will cause more short covering uh, to just thrust us up over this resistance, which seems to be capping any sort of wheat rally. Guys, if you have any questions, please give us a call. The number is 877-472-4607.